This video might actually be better labeled a different way to solve the problem. Here's what I mean. We've got a file with sheets that have data from different states. The structure of each sheet is identical. It's the data that's different. So what I'd like to do is apply artistry to all of these sheets, make it look better. Now, one way to do this would be to paint the first sheet and then use something like the Format Painter to apply that paint scheme to the remaining sheets. And although I've solved the problem that way hundreds of times, I want to show you another way to do it that's kind of interesting. And while we solve this problem, we'll also see an interesting little paste option that you may not be familiar with. Be sure to download these sample files from the link in the video description so you can follow along. So we'll begin by applying some artistry to this first sheet. I'll start with my title. I'll start by increasing the font size from 22 points to 36 points. I'll make it italicized. And I'll take these cells and give them something like a blue fill color. Next, the headings for my table. I'll highlight the headings. I'd like them centered, bold, and I'm going to apply an underline to that entire row. Now that underline starts off as a thin black if I just use the default choice. So I'm going to highlight those cells. And instead of choosing the default bottom border, I'm gonna to go to more borders and I'm gonna pick the color of the border that I want. In this case, I'll pick this blue. I'm gonna pick a thick line and apply it to the bottom. Hit okay. For the item amount column, column D, I'm going to give that a currency style. And then for the rest of this table, I'm going to click on the first transaction number, hold down Control Shift down arrow, and then Control Shift right arrow. And I'll go up back to my borders, and I'll give it a thin blue border all the way around the outside and on the inside. Hit OK. And I realized by doing in that order, I just replaced my solid underline for my heading. So let me go back into my border colors, choose a thick border, and put that back on the bottom. And just so it's more obvious for us to see what's happening, I'm going to reselect Control Shift down right. And I'll go up to my fill color and give it a very pale blue background. And my final touch will be to reduce this second row, the row between the heading and the title, and take this row and make it about half its height. That way the headings aren't so distant from the title, but they're not butted right up against it. I also like to go up to view and turn off my grid lines. So here's where the different way of doing things comes into play. What a lot of people will do is they click in the upper left corner of the data, scroll down and shift click in the lower right corner of the data then go up to something like Home and hit Format Painter. Then they could go over to the next sheet, give it a click, and apply all that formatting. Now notice all of the formatting carried over except for the hiding of the grid lines and the height reduction of the second row. Format Painter doesn't change those types of things. But now I want to do the same thing for Hawaii and Michigan and Ohio and Rhode Island and Tennessee. Now what most people would tell you is, go ahead and select the upper left corner, shift click the lower right, but then double click the Format Painter to lock it into this active position. Then you could go to Hawaii, give it a click, go to Michigan, give it a click, go to Ohio, give it a click, and then on and on and on. But imagine if you had 50 states or 180 countries. This is not exactly an attractive offer. Even though Format Painter works, that method is somewhat tedious. You could apply the Format Painter in bulk if you pre group the sheets. So let's take that same example. I click A1, I shift click the lower right corner of that data for the first sheet, I go up and hit Format Painter. Then I click on Florida, but before I click any cell and apply that formatting, I'm going to shift click on the last sheet, thereby having selected all the other sheets. Then I'll click in the upper left corner of the first selected sheet. Walking through the sheets, I can see that that formatting has been applied. Now, as stated before, the Format Painter does not carry over the hiding of the grid lines, or the height reduction of row two. But we could go back, select the first sheet in that group, hold down shift, select the last sheet in the group, go up to view, turn off our grid lines, and then manually resize that second row. Now each of those state sheets have those same modifications. Now the only thing I could really argue with this particular method is that the row height for the first sheet and all the other sheets don't match. I was just guessing. Well, let's do this precisely. So we have our first state set up the way we like it. I'm going to highlight all of the data. And now to apply that forming to the remaining sheets, I'm just going to shift click on the very last sheet and then go up to Home, Fill, Across Worksheets. Now this, I'm guessing, is a fill option you've probably never used. But here's how it works. When you choose Across Worksheets, a dialog box appears that wants to know, do you want to fill everything from this first sheet, all of the data and all of the art, to all of the other sheets? Do you just want to repeat the data on all the sheets or just the formatting on all the sheets? Now, since I don't want the data from the Alabama sheet, I just want the artistry, 
I'm going to go with formats. When I hit OK, I'll go down and select Florida, Hawaii, Michigan, Ohio, Rhode Island, Tennessee, all have received the formatting. Now, just like the format painter, the fill across worksheets suffers from the same limitation of not being able to deactivate the grid lines or changing the row height of row two. But we can do that in a couple different ways. One, let's take the grid lines. I'm going to click on Florida, shift click on Tennessee, thereby selecting all of the states that still have grid lines, and then go up to view and turn off my grid lines. So now if we examine each of those sheets, no grid lines. The final issue is the height of row two, making that half the height. Now I could select all of the other state sheets and manually resize row two, but I wanna make sure it's exactly the same size as the first sheet and notice by doing it manually, I'm not getting that precision. So I'm gonna hit undo. Here is a very cool paste option that you've probably never seen. Before we apply it here, I wanna show you how it works in a different scenario that's more obvious. Here we have a spreadsheet with sales data from four different states, Florida, Maine, Tennessee, Wyoming. Now the columns on each of these sheets have an auto fit to the perfect column width, but perfect just means no wasted pixels. To me, this is far from perfect because when everything is tight like this, it's very difficult to read. So maybe we'd like to take this and give it a little breathing room. So I'll take the first sheet, Florida, and I'm gonna give it a very wide first column for the customer. I'll give it a moderately wide for order, product ID, and then quantity and amount, I want them to be the exact same width. I will take these two headings for quantity and amount and change their alignment. But I would like all of the other sheets to have these exact same column widths as the first sheet. So what if we could copy paste just column widths? Back on the first sheet with the proper column widths, I'll highlight columns A through E, go up and hit copy. Then I could go to the next sheet, sitting in column A, go to the paste options and go to paste special and choose column widths. Hit OK, and now Maine's column widths are the same width as Florida's column widths. Now, if I didn't want to have to do each sheet separately, because I might have many sheets, I'm going to hit undo and put Maine back. I could go to Florida, highlight those columns, copy, click on the first sheet of the remaining sheets, shift click on the last sheet, and then go back up to paste, paste special, and paste the column widths. Now, looking back at Florida, Maine, Tennessee, Wyoming, they all have the exact pixel perfect column dimensions. The unfortunate thing is that doesn't work with rows because if we select a row and copy it, when we go to our paste options, paste special, we have an option for column widths, but we don't have an option for row heights, which is really unfortunate. But here's how we can work around it. Cancel, hit escape. If we select the row that is the height that we want and then go up to home, format, row height, Whatever's in here, it doesn't matter, just hit OK. Now what you've just done is you've recorded that action. And if we wanna repeat that action, we can just go to the next sheet, click on whatever row we're interested in, and hit the F4 key. Because F4 will repeat whatever the last thing it was that we did. I could go to Hawaii and hit F4 and repeat that action. Now I don't wanna do this 50 times, and because this works with grouped sheets, it would be easier just to select the first of the rest of the sheets, shift click the last of the rest of the sheets, go to row two, and then just hit F4 and apply that row height operation to all of the selected sheets. So just to repeat that for this example, doing everything at once, I set Alabama to the height that I want, go up to format, row height, and just hit okay with whatever's there. I select the next sheet in the series, shift click the last sheet in the series, go to row two, and hit F4. And now I've applied that height to all of the other sheets. My final use case example for the fill across worksheets, just so you can see what it does, but I'm not sure you're gonna end up using this option very often, is I have the Alabama sheet with data and formatting. The remaining sheets have different formatting, but no data. Well, let's suppose that I would like to take the data from Alabama and repeat it on all the other sheets. Now you could do this with a copy paste, obviously, but just for the sake of it, I'm going to go to the sheet with the data, do a control A, select all that information, but then hold down shift and click on the last sheet in the series, go up to fill across worksheets and tell it to fill the contents. Hit okay. Now with my sheets ungrouped, if I walk through the sheets, all the data has been repeated. So really this just saved me the copy step and then the pasting to each of the sheets. And even if I pasted them as a group, it would still be a few more clicks. So again, not exactly something I think you'll use a lot. You'll probably use the formatting more often than the contents, but at least now you understand what that feature is for.
So give me your thoughts on the fill across worksheets feature. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it overkill? Redundant? Amazing? What adjective would you pick? Let me know in the comments. And again, feel free to download the data file from the link in the video description if you want to practice this. Thank you for watching. And remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.